Hi, um, let me help answer the question about how to use the TIA83 calculator. Now first, before I jump right into that, I want to remind you that um, under the list of approved test notes, there are several calculator tools. Um, here one is called the calculator review card. Another one is called um, the GC review card. That's graphing calculator review card. It's pretty much the same, but it's just a different edition. Uh, this one's from 2010 and then this one's from 2013 it's a newer one and then there's one specifically for doing stats with the TI-8384 which I'm sure that's probably the one you're going to be most interested in but um, I don't know that having those printed material is enough you've, you've, got, you've had to have used them several times to be familiar where to go during the test so that way you're not just learning during the test time but you've learned before and you've mastered it and now you're just when you're taking tests and quizzes, you're just um, applying what you've already mastered or learned. So um, let me make a point about that. The The better place to go to help with the mastery, maybe, is in the Tools for Success. And um, I've shown this before, so I'm sorry, you know, fast forward if this is uh, something you know because I've said it several times. Um, but here are actually the locations of where I get these these cards. So here's the graphing calculator manual for the TI-83 and 84. Um, that one is one that you can use. Um, the statistics graphing calculator card and then the graphing calculator tutorial and a graphing calculator reference. So there's, there's several. It's this tutorial that you can't use during the tests or the final exam um, or midterm but uh, it definitely will help you learn the material. It simulates a graphing calculator and then um, lets you go through different things that you want to find out. Like uh, you would ask about finding the probability, um, how to find the p-value. So that's, that's basically how to find probability with a test statistic as your benchmark. Now I say basically because that's not entirely true. Um, there's one time when we're doing two-tailed tests, or in other words, when we're doing confidence intervals, where we only have one test statistic, but there's actually two benchmarks. Um, there's, there's two cutoffs. And let me zoom in here just a little bit here to remind you that when you're finding p-values, and this is again in one of the approved um, handouts. This is called the formula foldout. It's also in your book. Uh, there's, I'll show you the slight difference between this and the uh, and the book one in just a moment. But when you're finding the p-values, you must think along these lines. And this flow chart that you see right here is also in the Tools for Success in an animated uh, video kind of setting. Uh, it's not actually a video, but it's an animation anyway. It you first decide what kind of test are you doing? Are you doing a left tail test, or right tail test, or two tailed test? Now that's dependent on the no, uh, on the alternative hypothesis. So you, you look at your alternative hypothesis, and um, if it is a greater than alternative, then you're going to be in the right tail, where things get bigger. So over here is where you're looking for your p-value based on your test statistic. Now, it should co most of our problems will correspond with a positive test statistic, and that reminds you that also that you're in the right tail. But you could actually have a negative test statistic it would just be a pretty ridiculous hypothesis test if your test statistic is negative, <laughs> meaning all the way over here on the left, when you're doing a right tail test. So most of the time though, it's gonna be a positive test statistic. But the right tail, left tail, all the tails, that's determined by whatever the alternative statement is. If it's greater than statement, it's over here. If it's a less than statement, it's left tail, so it's gonna be over on the left, less than where things get smaller. But if it's a two-tailed test, that would be if the statement was um, an equality. You know, say someone is making a claim that um, that there are there's always 30% red M&Ms in every in every M&M package. 30% of the uh, candies will be red. And that that statement is a is a direct statement. It's a statement of equality. And so when you get your test statistic, your test statistic will either turn out to be um, negative. Sorry about that stuff getting in our way. Let me just move it out of the way. Um, or it will be positive. If it's negative, in other words, if it's left of center, follow this advice or this, this direction. If it's positive, follow this direction. It's essentially the same 
idea though. You, you take whatever tail it moves you over to and double it. So, and that's because um, for a confidence interval or for a two-tailed hypothesis test, you've got two critical regions. Okay, so let me get back over here. So, this calculator tutorial for statistics will show you how to do this stuff. It'll tell you if it's a normal distribution or, um, or even if you want to go right to the hypothesis test and, and learn how to read the p-values off of those results. That's that's just fine because those will give you the p-values in the um, in the results after you put in the summary statistics or the data. Okay, so what I would say is just uh, go go investigate these things. Okay, I'm I'm trying to direct you there, but I'm not going to spend the whole time you know going through an example. But here is where it'll give you access to learning how to find the p-value by going into the distribution functions of the TI calculator. All right. Now, just to go back, um, that is, again, it's found in the Tools for Success folder. And it, your, your course may have a different color than mine. This one's the orange course, but it's in the Tools for Success. And it is the down at the bottom ga graphing calculator tutorial for statistics to learn. Once you've learned and you just need quick reference, then you use the graphing calculator um, study card. Now, I've got all of those up right now. so. Let's see here. You can use the the general uh, review card. I'm sorry, that was not the general. Um, here's the general one. Or you can use the, the specific for statistics one. So let me go back to that. And scroll down. You'll have this during the tests, which is perfectly fine. And here is um, where they start talking about finding um, inferences, confidence intervals. Okay, here's confidence intervals and hypothesis tests. And uh, like I said, uh, if you watch the video, you'll see how you can read the p-value from the, from the hypothesis test results. Uh, if you wanted a specific page for when they first show you how to find p-value, that's when they take you into the distributions. And uh, here's the first area where they start doing that. Start showing you how to, how to use the inverse norm CDF and I mean normal CDF and inverse norm. And then the, the T distribution is not much different. Okay, I think that helps. Now I'm gonna see if I can also cite some more examples. But essentially, I would encourage you to use the tools for success and to be familiar to, to learn with and to be familiar with the um, the uh, allowed or approved test notes. Oh, one more thing. I'm sorry. I did say that I would point out the difference. So on the uh, formula foldout card, the only difference that I can find between the current edition and the one that I have posted for your approved notes is that if you go to the T distribution, and this doesn't really apply to what you asked because you said you were going to be using the TI-83 calculator, but if you go to the T distribution, you'll notice that um, the the uh, available degrees of freedom uh, are on the left here, and it goes down, and as you're counting, it goes 30, 31, 32, 33, 30, uh, sorry, uh, 32, no 33, 34, no 35, and it, it goes on. Now it skips 33, 35, and, and all of these tables do that. They don't, you know, they don't show everyone because at one, some point the level of significance um, is, has no difference in the critical values that you get. But um, for some reason, in the new edition of the t-value chart, just zoom in here a little bit. Um, this far column, far left column, is are the degrees of freedom. The new one actually has a, a, the row for 33 and for 35 and so on, which um, which you'll notice like 35 right here was missing from the. Uh, formula fold out that uh, that you're allowed to use if you were to I'm just looking at the middle column if you were to just average the 30 the de degrees of freedom for 34 and the degrees of freedom for 36 which is 2.032 and 2.03 2.028 you would average and get 2.03 so 
you know, in some sense, it, it, it wasn't necessary to have 35 in there, right? And actually, the same thing would have happened for 33. If you would have averaged the um, 2.037 and the 2.032, you would have gotten the 2.0345, and um, that would have rounded to 2.035 anyway. So maybe that's why originally they didn't have those values, because they figured they could save space for something they didn't think was necessary. I don't know. And I, and I haven't really thought that much about it. Um, one more thing. There's a an approved test note uh, that's called Stat G1T. That was for um, stats with the graphing calculator, I think. Anyways, uh, Appendix C is the sheet that I have available to you. And some of you have seen this, some of you haven't. But um, if you open that one up and print that out, you'll be pleasantly um, surprised with all the detail it gives. It shows the shortcuts really easily, um, showing you if you want to find the normal distribution, a, a z-score. Here's what you do, there's what you do, and you know, it just has push this button, push this button, push that button. Real easy. All right.